star in line at the Daily Horror Arena. Okay, this gives me a minute or two to experiment with uh, trying to get the on-screen chat working. Oh, we got an opponent. All right. Um, one thing we don't have is an understanding of how to play this game. <laughs> but I think I'm just supposed to push pawns and hope that good things happen. Um, I think that's the general idea. So let's protect our pawns. And try not to double pawns. Whenever possible, try not to double them. And just slowly, um, very patiently move forward. Okay, so he's got a double attack on d5. But, yeah, that's not the most potent double attack ever. Um, I could take b6 twice. I could take b6, then push c5. Oh, the double attack's on a5. That's what I have to be concerned about. So, okay, I'm forced to capture b6. Yes, this does give more scope to the rook, but there's nothing I could have done about that. Uh, now we have triple b pawns. But I get to push c5 with tempo. Or a5. Which is it going to be? If I push a5 now... Hmm... Let's put it this way. If I don't push c5, c 5s never happening. So, yeah, now c5 gives me time to push c4 later. So, all looks well here. Um... Again, I'm trying to undouble my pawns where reasonable. Um, and shore up my center. It appears I'm doing well in every regard here. Ideally, I'd have four pawns on every file. And then my pawns just march forward, two by two. Just due to the strange distribution at the start of the game that, um, okay, so now there's a threat on d5. Or is there? Knight takes d5, pawn takes, bishop takes, pawn takes. Not a scary threat. So let's just secure that. Um, do I take that? Or do I just push g6 or f6? I think I push past the h pawn. Okay, so yeah, I missed that h4 was hanging. That's my bad. Um, but even that's not lethal. As long as I don't move anything in that vicinity, I should be 
okay. Um, but I'm kind of forced to move at this point. So things are about to get wild. Um, so I guess that means it's time for me to launch a counterattack. We're going to try C6. I'm not sure about C6 at all, but if anything's going to break through, I have some confidence that it'd be something like C6. Um, Now, e4 is hanging, so to protect e4, we do this. Um, okay, so he just sacked the house to break through. Um, so now I want to advance by pawns as a phalanx. Um, So yeah, I am losing the house here. Things are definitely not in my favor. But it's still going to take some tempi for him to uh, make the progress he needs to make. So while he's taking my back rank, I'm moving forward. It's a bizarre position. Okay, so now I'm going to have to push d6, e6, e7. Um, that's being stifled, so d6, and then racing the b-pawn. This pawn is not something for me to fear. Okay, so... Whoa, he's sacking the rook. Um, it seems a bit aggressive. The question is, can my pawns hold up against the queen? Can I make any serious threats in this kind of position? And can I do it with a clock ticking? I'm going to say no on that last question. That... Just as a practical matter, there's just too much for a human to keep track of. Yeah, so I am so busted here. Unless I can secure a stalemate, which probably won't happen. Still trying to push the e pawn. Maybe there's a zugzwang. Um, I just have to race at this point. You got me. So that puts me in last place in the tournament. That's too bad. I think I did play well that game. It just wasn't good enough. One mistake can be fatal in Horde Chess, so... Um, well, who was my opponent? My opponent was DMAC 6500. He's the top seed in the tournament now. And I get the white pieces again, so we're going to try... The same thing we tried last game. Um, it's been said that insanity is just trying the same thing over and over and expecting different results to occur. Um, 
but I don't know. I don't know what the first move for white should be. Nor do I know, like, if this is winning or losing from the onset. I guess I'm leaving pawns on a3, a2, a1, um, just so I have more flexibility in how I advance my center. Beautiful thing about horde chess is you're not forced to, you're not in any way compelled to recapture. Okay, so yeah, he's trying to form a dark square complex. I don't think it's going to work. Particularly not if he gives away a pawn. So, how do I advance here? I guess I just push d5 and e6, right? Maybe even c4. So as long as I don't lose my center, I think I'm pretty cool here. One thing I'm scared of is a sack on H on A5. Um, I don't know how scared I should be, but it frightens me quite a bit. But that aside, I'm pretty happy about this position. Oh, I see. This is the same castling thing that happened the other game, too. Um, and... I royally blew that game. That doesn't mean that I have to blow it. It just means that I have to be a little more cautious than I was last game. A little more patient. It goes way against my style, because I love being trying to live on the edge and play aggressive moves, but when all you have are pawns, it's difficult to come up with aggressive plays. So, this was my thought, that even if he sacks on a5, I just set up these pawns in this formation, and you'd have to sack another piece to get through, and maybe even more than that. So while I've got that locked up, um, I've really been playing defense this whole game. And once he stops attacking, I can... I mean, it's really hard to play offense, because you can't shift your pieces willy-nilly um, like, the, like the pieces can. The horde just has to be content with making slow, steady progress. That goes way, way, way against the grain of my normal playing style. Okay. I think this is a decisive moment. So, my pawns are breaking on the beach here, as it were. I don't have much choice in the matter. I do have to capture the bishop, don't I? And so that happens, and e1 drops. Um... But again, it's nothing to be afraid of. These things happen in this variant. 
I have to take there so I don't lose d6. I guess now we've tried to push through the e pawn, right? Okay, so now we have. Well, we've got lots and lots of past pawns. That's one way to look at it. Okay, so how do I checkmate? Okay, that was cool. Oh, I guess once there's three adjacent empty or unblocked files, that's what it takes to promote a pawn. I actually took four. Hmm. So if there are four adjacent files that aren't blocked, then a pawn should be able to promote. So this is my third try with the horde. Um, hey, victory! All right, first place. Again. <laughs> it looks like I'm going to get to play against Ambitiously Lazy. That's quite the title there, or quite the name. Oh, but that's the guy we know. He's just sitting there. He hasn't decided on a move yet. And it looks like that's going to be a resignation or a forfeiture, right? Oh, hey, now we get him. Okay, so I'm going to try to get a dark square complex. Or I don't know where I'm trying to set up on. I've got a double attack there, and now I carry through with the threat. Um, I want to spread these pawns thin somehow. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, that's highly unusual. So if he pushes the G pawn... Okay. So I'm going to try to take out these two... All these pawns on the king's side. If I can open those two files, then my pieces have a pretty clear path to victory. Maybe I should have considered knight d7, um, but then maybe d4 stifles that idea, so this is probably the more accurate way to go anyhow. Who needs minor pieces? Okay, here's a fork. If e2, I just take h2, and I take 
H2 again. And yeah, GG. Assuming I don't do something stupid, which you never know, I might do something dumb. Okay. Well, my queen's kind of invincible there, isn't it? Tried to get the rook out and blockade all four of those pawns. Okay. Apparently, my opponent's cooperating with my blockade idea. So, yeah, this, these are all frozen. Obviously, he's trying to aggressively push to promote something. Um, but desire to make something happen isn't the only ingredient to make it actually happen. Um, So let's go back to pawn munching. Okay, we're going to munch c5. Oh. Oh, that's going to land me in a fork. I think I'm okay with that. So he can fork my queen and rook. But that's okay, because if he takes the rook, I take all the pawns. And this is the value of the barricade. Now it's possible that both of us have completely misplayed this game. I would not doubt that one bit. But I think I've played it well enough to uh, score a point. Okay, I have to take the pawns from the base. Um, does make a real threat in the center, but I don't see the breakthrough. This is what it all comes down to, is can he break through somehow? I think he's a little bit too slow to break through. And I think now I just mop up. Um, do I do pawn takes or queen takes? Queen takes seems reasonable. Now I'm threatening that. And I guess there, yeah, there is e4 that does defend uh, f5. But there's only so long he can hold on and defend everything. Yeah. 
Ah, uh, poor ambitiously lazy. So. How's it going, everybody? Friday. I'm guessing people are probably watching Chess Bra. And there's nothing I can do about that. But, um, okay, so against that... I don't know. Maybe I set up on light squares. Not so familiar with 1h5. Um... I think I want to undermine all this, though. I think that does make sense as an opening uh, play. That even though my knight doesn't get developed, I am able to at least get my long-range pieces moving somewhere. Um, so I think if I just keep attacking dark squares, I can make something happen. I can't say what, but I think something, I hope something good will happen. And I'd prefer to just sit and wait for him to capture than for me to capture first. Um, but there are exceptions to that rule. Like if I see an opportunity to trade a minor piece for two pawns, I tend to do that. That's because I can't wait for the inevitable. Um, so this is attacked. The only way to defend it is g2, and that hangs h2. So white's got a huge problem in that he needs a passed pawn, like, right now. Um... Yeah, I am working on a horde chess engine. Um, the problem is that people are skeptical of how good its evaluations are. Um, hang on one second. Can I just take f6? Yeah, we're stacking a knight for two. Yes, I have actually developed an engine, and um, anybody can download the source code for it. But the evaluation, the numbers that it gives out, suggest that white is totally lost in the start position. That's a bit discouraging. Suggest that like white is down nine points even before he's moved anything, and I don't think that anybody on Lee Chess or anywhere else is willing to accept that conclusion. So, um, so we say that the engine is still like under development and stuff. Um. Oh, that is kind of a threat now, isn't it? Ah, so, yeah, G7 check is coming. That's not good. But I need the G7 square for my king. My opponent actually knows what he's doing. Despite having really limped into this position. Um, yeah, when it plays itself, um, actually I haven't been able to get it to play itself because there's no chess program like it can evaluate a position, but it has no way of playing against another engine unless there's an interface to play on. And on Lee Chess, you can't play a computer against itself. 
and in every other chess interface you can't start with that given position so there's no way to get it to play against itself so i can't tell like how i mean i could have it analyze the start position and just keep sitting there analyzing it but that's the best i can do right now and that's not very informative pretty sadly so what's more interesting i think well, okay. Yeah, so what's more interesting is when I have it analyze positions that I find confusing. And I think I had a, or Zug Addict was giving a simul. And I tried a strategy there um, where the king side got completely opened and the queen side completely barricaded. I was playing without my bishop, knight, or rook moving anywhere. And um, basically, the engine analyzed the game and concluded that I played it well. That maybe I missed a few better moves, but uh, the way I played it was sound. So that kind of suggests that the idea of opening the king side and leaving the queen side closed is just completely refuted. That if you're going to play as the horde, you need to play on both sides of the board. You can't just play on the king's side. Oh, well, chess sucks. Uh, actually, so you say you saw my... Oh, you might be talking about somebody like De Haymaker. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite unfortunate for him. I was going to say, if you're talking about my position in the marathon, I was happy with it. You could hang on to the rook for a little bit longer. Uh, okay. That really doesn't threaten anything as far as I see. Yes, he's going to get open A and B files, but that's not going to be enough. Since I have a, practically have an open E file, and I'm mopping up the king side really quickly. No, 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 I could not have won the marathon. That, I was not even close. No. Like, if you watched my play in the marathon, you'd have seen that... Um, for the last four hours of my participation, I was within, like, slots 55 through 45. And just progress was incredibly slow and miraculous. Um, there was no way that I could have won the marathon. Plus, half the fun of my playing in it were the first few hours where I just got easy pairing after easy pairing because um, late joining means that I get uh, paired with people who have similar scores. And that was quite fun. Um, yes, I don't really care if he takes my A pawns. In fact, I kind of hope that he does. That means I have fewer B pawns to contend with. So, my rook. Okay, is my queen located where I need it? I think so. So, that means my rook is going to do cleanup on the back row. So, we take d1, d1. E1. I really want to clean the B file. Oh, I could take C5, couldn't I? Also, I'm going to win on time. 
Aha! Didn't expect that move, did you? Okay. Yeah, that was fun. Um, but I think that the pieces do have an advantage in that start position. Um, so, I don't know. Like, I'm surprised people are able to get very high ratings at this variant. Because um, black has a pretty strong advantage. As far as I see, anyway. Um, I've been trying d5, a5, d4. So d4 protects c5, so I'm not hanging stuff right out of the opening. Um, and now this protects c5 again. a5 is protected. Uh, I could push d6. Interesting. Um, yeah, this... I know normally you don't like to lock the board like that. Um, What's going on here? What is going on? I'm trying to take the center. All of my light squares are vulnerable. But he doesn't have a piece that can drop onto my light squares. And I'm starting to shore them up. So, what's going on here? Do I want to take? I don't think I do. take h5, but then rook takes h5. Take g6, and that's a free pawn. Oh. Well, this will get into some of the more interesting aspects of how pawns move in horde to chess. Um, ordinarily, this kind of structure would be terrible. Um, but what makes this eligible is the fact that pawns can move two squares. Not all pawns, but important ones can. Um, do I want to let g6 go? Or do I want to try to hold on to g6? Why don't I just take the knight? I take the knight, he does bishop takes. Yeah, the knight's going to be a menace, though. The knight has to go. Okay, so he's got my g5 pawn on the ropes. But I'm forcing his rook to move to g8. Yeah, I love this background. I had to dim it down a bit because people said it was just overwhelming. But, okay. I was threatening to take twice on g5. I can't stop him from taking twice on g5, but it's not the most relevant thing in the position anymore. So, let's see. Yeah, now I have to push d5, d6, right? Okay. Giving up a rook, I don't have to take the rook. But if I don't, he's just going to sack it again and again and again until I finally do take it. Um,
but I think this position seems pretty reasonable. As long as I can get rid of this pawn, I think I've got something here. I just basically have a pawn steamroller that can't be stopped. I just have to be careful not to hang any of it. I've got five adjacent pawns. Push e3 and d4 and c4 and slowly menace our way forward. And what's black going to do about it? Okay, I've got quadruple B pawns and triple D pawns. I guess I deflect the D pawn. I can take this way. Or I could take the other way, too. Because I am threatening something. That wasn't forced. Um, probably wasn't a good idea on his part. I have to be patient and recognize that I cannot promote right away. Although, with that rook moving away, this gets a little bit easier. Uh, just keep moving. And just keep moving. And hope that there's no stalemate trick here somewhere. It would be a cruel twist of fate if there were. He wants me to push F4 and stalemate him. That's not going to happen. And my pawn phalanx is complete. That is one heck of a pawn chain. Just extends all the way across the board. Okay, and b7 next. Sure, we'll take a rook. And the king's got nowhere to run. Yeah, I guess that's the point, is that you're supposed to form either a phalanx or a pawn chain. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not familiar with military formations. Um... I think the phalanx is the pyramid shaped thing. But okay, we'll give this a go. A5. Well, that stops me from playing A5 now, doesn't it? Um, it kind of cramps my style. Not gonna lie. OK, 
Okay. I know I normally don't like just taking things. Um, but it's really hard to resist that. There's going to be so many open files by the end of this. Can't resist. Now I'd love to play d5, except he's going to sack on c5 if I do. Oh! Holy moly! What a gift! Okay. Look at all these open lines. So many squares I could promote on. Oh, and I forgot about this. Ah, my hopes and dreams are shattered. If I had not forgotten about F5, I might have had some very serious advantage. Uh, now it's just a moderate advantage. If anything. Yeah, see the material imbalance on the right? The, you see like a zillion pawns on one side and all the pieces on the other. It would be the most interesting and yet most uninteresting material imbalance ever. Um, okay. So yeah, this knight's dancing all over the position, but you don't get points for dancing. I have to be super careful about how I move forward. Ah, he's going to do another knight for two. That really annoys me. Um, Nothing I could do to stop it. Maybe I just let it happen. Okay, so forget the F pawn yet again. Oh, shoot. He can take twice on E5. But he didn't. But he could have, but he didn't. He's probably going to move the bishop away, giving me time for D4. Although, if he moves it the correct way... Okay. Yeah, he's paying attention. Okay, so I get the bishop. Not what I wanted. Yeah, I recognize just how fragile this is. Uh, it's only a question of where do I want to concede first. D3 goes. I couldn't save it. So, um, maybe I should have tried to save the D-pawn. It would take me forever to promote. Again, passive defense is never really hold in this game anyway. Just like that, I have some attacking again.
actually making a threat and just take the knight. Where's the knight going to go? Gotta be the clumsiest attack ever. I got a rook. A few more attacks like that, and I might actually have something. Do I have time to take? I don't know. I'm going to guess no. I'm going to guess that this has to be done immediately, if not sooner. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. So I'm... oh. Oh, wow. Um... Okay, so as long as the rook's over there... Shoot, I have to play this. I don't want to, but I must. Trying to make this complicated. I'm not sure that I'm succeeding. Or even remotely close to succeeding. King blockades all the pawns. Make some dumb move over here. Okay, so I got some action. Um. And now we're in time trouble. And there's a stalemate. How about that? So, yeah, clearly my opponent was trying to push me over on the clock. He almost succeeded, but he forgot the rules of the game. And I think a stalemate is a pretty good result. Um, given that I think objectively white's lost. Whoa, okay. Okay, buddy. Yeah, where's the knight going, though? I mean, should I even bother taking it? Okay, knight might be going to c5, but even from c5, where would it go? Oh, I'll just protect this and try to build up some kind of phalanx-like thing.
Again, I keep refusing to just take his pieces, because that would be too boring. <laughs> um, I'm just going to double my pawns and just slowly march them forward. Because that's the majestic thing. Okay, so now he's threatening to take twice an f5, which seems to be my Achilles heel in all these games. Um, oh, I guess I lash out with f6. Try to protect it somehow. I think his problem here... Okay, one I could take on Passant, not that I want to. I think the problem is that I just play f5 and break through on the light squares. He hasn't created a single open diagonal, nor a single open file. So, as soon as some of these center pawns go, I just promote. Promote all of my pawns. Um, that's the one threat, is that we could just take f6. Um, but if I can get his pawns to take away from the center, betray their king. Making progress. I don't think that white's starting or black's starting advantage is large enough that he can afford to play just recklessly like he's playing here. I think black needs to play more strategically. So I finally take that knight. And the reason why is because I want to use this e5 square. I want to build up that pawn chain we saw the other game, where my pawns extend from one side of the board to the other. I have a dream. The e4 is happening. How nice if there were a piece on g6. That'd be checkmated. But there is not. So there is no mate. Okay, this is meant to undermine my pawn on a5. Um, but I can take on Passant and not be undermined. I don't have to take that bishop. I'll just stay there. Or I could take it. But I don't want to. But maybe it's better taken now than waiting for the right moment to take it. I'm just worried that if I take, what are all the things he can attack? I can't possibly calculate that, but... Um, so, yeah, I just refuse to take it. I need my pawns together in the center. Anybody else see a trend of people trying to beat me on time? Like, all of my opponents try to get ahead on the clock.
Um, that's really committal to play g4. Well, no, it's not, because I could just play g4 later. Um, okay, so seal in the queen. See if we can promote. Also see if I can do something tricky. King d6 is forced. There's no trickiness for me today. Okay, we do promote, though. No, we don't. Crap. Crap, crap, crappity crap. <laughs> uh, okay. There we go. We got our promotion. There we go. That's what happens when people try to push me over on the clock. And they let me promote, and I find the checkmate. Well, I guess he was trying to play for a win at the end there. Been on a losing streak. That's kind of sad. Um, but yeah, he definitely went all in on an attack there. Okay. Um, I haven't really seen d5, d6. I think the reason is just it's not confrontational enough. Whereas like d5e6, it's clear where the confrontation occurs. Um, it was like the horde incredible ability to specify where the battleground is. Oh, okay. I could play f6 here. Well, I mean, I started the... Yeah, actually, that is kind of weird that I keep getting the white pieces. Um, but okay. It's a fun game. Shouldn't get too critical about ratings or colors and all that. I'm not, like, the world's leading player at this game, so I'm not in a position where I should complain about colors. I can certainly learn to play better with any color here. Like, playing e5 is a huge blunder, um, allowing him to take d5. And he didn't take it. And that would have won him the d5 pawn. And pretty convincing control of the center. Um... I have to barricade pawns and then attack them. I guess. Like I'm saying, I don't think that e4, d4 would be any good. I'm keeping as many pawns as I can on the g and h and a and b files early in the game. So, in case I want to, like, run many pawns up the side of the board. Oh. 
Oh. Wow, that's kind of old. Um. Can't take advantage of it, but cool if I could. Like, why is that rook on a7? He's kind of begging me to play b6, and yet I can't play it. Ooh, we're being hosted. Oh, thank you. So, here we are at the head of a tournament. Um, not sure, like, do I take the e-pawn or the g-pawn? I think I take toward the center in this case. The black is just trying to keep all of his pawns on the board. And I'm trying to just keep moving forward. I don't really have any particular objective because there's nothing for me to attack. Um, I just want to move forward without hanging stuff. Like this. I don't want to hang that. Ah, there's so much I can learn about this game. <laughs> My lack of knowledge is inexhaustible. Now I need to play b3 and c4 and e3 um, just to get rid of this guy. And now that's not so much of a problem now, is it? And normally you take, if you had an idea of like, after I take back you'd strike this guy. Um, but black doesn't have anything really lined up there. Okay. Ah, so now he strikes from behind at my d5 pawn. Uh, could have seen that, meaning I should have played d3 here. I just didn't see this threat. So really really annoying threat. Although I don't think it's fatal. I think I have enough to just barely hang together after that. But yeah, this is going. And so is the c6 pawn. So Fortunate that some of this is holding together, but not looking good. I could just get a blunder out of black. That would be so convenient. Okay, we're going to try to limit the scope of the rook. That's a, uh, something I can do. And then try to follow it up by promoting something on the king's side. I don't know how, but pretty much my only try here. Ooh, there's a queen. That would be a blunder of the scope that I need to win this. I might even be able to win it before the tournament ends. Maybe not. Oh shoot, if I could get d4 in 
I can't. Of course not. Um. Okay, so this is pretty loose. But at least we got G7, F7, and H7 all threatened, so... we we'll start with the one that hits the rook. Okay. And then we try to mate the king, I guess. Oops. Awesome! We win it before the tournament ends. Because, you know, that extra two points at the end was really important. Okay. So what we learned is in the end game, having a pawn chain that spans the board is really important. In the opening, um, trying to trade off pawns for pawns and trying to um, cover a lot of space is important. So it's really vital to just develop and keep moving forward. And don't get fixated on any one plan, just know that eventually your pawns will move forward and 50 turns later make some kind of threat. Really, any tricks or traps you try to do in, as the horde in the opening just don't work. So, yeah, we're learning how to play that better. Um, okay.